What's going on guys, Snake Eyes here playing some more Dark Souls 2 and in this video we're going to be doing a weapon showcase and the weapon we're going to be showcasing today is the Red Iron Twin Blade. Now if you don't know how to get this weapon all you have to do is go towards the end of Shrine of Amana, um, go to the area where the Peculiar Kindler usually invades you and um, in that little area you'll find this weapon and that's how you get the Red Iron Twin Blade. Now we're going to go ahead and get into the details of this weapon. Um, its base damage is at 90 and since then I've actually infused mine with lightning and upgraded it to plus 10. So my base damage is at 126 with a 126 base damage in lightning. It has a 120 counter strength, it does 30 poise damage per hit, it weighs 14 pounds and it has 175 durability. The requirements for this weapon is that you need 26 strength and 20 dexterity and it has a C scaling in strength and a B scaling in lightning when you infuse it with lightning. Now I'm kind of split with this weapon, um, I'll be honest, this isn't my kind of weapon, um, taking it out in PvP, I really didn't have that good of a time. Um, some of the fights were actually kind of really long and overstretched and I feel like I could have ended it a lot sooner if I had a better weapon. Thankfully this weapon only takes regular material, uh, regular titanite to upgrade because if it would have taken anything else, I'll be honest, I would have felt like I may have wasted those material but with that being said I did find one good con about this weapon that I really did like and that's that the two-handed R1 or the two-handed moveset is not the same as any of the other twin blades now all the other twin blades and even the Santir spear have the um, movesets to where it's really easy to parry and in one fight that I had with somebody he was actually using the regular twin blade um, I felt kind of bad because I was actually able to parry him three times because the two-handed moveset is really easy to parry and that's kind of something that I really did like about this weapon that it opens off with a slash and then it goes into where he starts twirling the blade that's kind of something that I really did like because when people saw that I was using a twin blade they were assuming the um, two-handed R1 mash and I can tell that what I was doing was kind of unexpected. Their parries were off and I was still able to pretty much land my hits pretty good without really having to worry about getting parried. So that was kind of something that I thought was a huge pro. It was It's something really subtle, but at the same time, if you're fighting people who are pretty good at parrying the twin blades or just parrying in general, this is something that can definitely throw them off and kind of allow you to actually get that second R1 where he starts twirling the blade and get you, uh, and actually get some hits in. Now with that being said, I'll go ahead and go to the con and that's that even though it was fully upgraded for me, when I had that fight with that one guy where I was landing the uh, three parries on him, I was actually really upset at the critical damage that I was doing. Now that could probably be because of the fact that he may have upgraded his armor, but at the same time being able to do three critical hits on him and still not being able to kill him was kind of something that kind of just turned me off a lot. And just in general, the damage was leaving something to be desired. So that's kind of one of the major cons in my opinion. Another con is that it's actually pretty heavy for a twin blade. Um, again, I think this is actually one of the hardest hitting ones. It's not the hardest hitting ones, but it's definitely up there. And with that being said, it still didn't hit a whole lot and not only that it kind of just weighs a whole lot now I really wanted to fool around with this weapon and just do a lot of different things to it I went with a lot of different infusions I was using one-handed move sets I was using the two-handed move set just really trying to find something that I really liked about this weapon and I'll be honest um, like I said in the beginning this is really not my weapon that's not to say that people besides me won't like it as well I feel like that there is potential for people who are actually trying to learn something else me just in general um, I'm not a big fan of the twin blades at all so picking up something like this kind of just didn't transition really well but for people who are actually used to the twin blades and actually like using them this is something that might be just a little bit out there and probably even worth a try now with that being said there's also another pro that I kind of thought of just right now and that's that the moveset actually does have a little bit of variety to it. Um, the one-handed can do some thrusting attacks. The two-handed doesn't have the standard twin blade moveset. Uh, it starts off with the slash which is really good because even if you're using a twin blade and you only just hit R1 once, 
standing there and twirling the blade uh, allows the person to kind of try to go for the backstab or even try to prepare for some attacks of his own. And having a two-handed um, R1 just do a regular slash is actually kind of cool. And I could tell one thing for sure when I was doing these battles is that these people weren't really ready for that. Um, which was something that was really cool, uh, being able to go in with a two-handed R1, switching back to one-handed, and then doing a thrusting attack was actually kind of cool. And like I said, that's a pretty good pro for me, and I'm all about having um, variety in the move set. But it just kind of goes back to my personal opinion where I just feel like that this is not really a weapon for me. But with that being said, I feel like if I dedicated a lot of time to it, uh, there could be room to be really, really good with it. But I have to, you know, swap back and forth between a lot of weapons. And the inevitable fact is that I'm not really going to enjoy all of them. So all in all, this pretty much going to wrap it up. I try not to be so negative on these weapon showcases because I feel like all of these weapons in their own right are actually really good. Um, one of the things about reviewing these weapons is that if I had a bad experience or I didn't have the experience that I was looking for, it'll translate but I try to be as open as possible I try to list the pros as well as the cons on every weapon even though some weapons are a little bit better than others I feel like that this one is definitely good in its own right especially if somebody wants to take the time and learn it and even though I didn't have a satisfying time with it I didn't have a bad time either so that's gonna go ahead and wrap it up leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you haven't already this kind of ties back into where if you have a request for a weapon showcase, let me know. It's going to take some time because there are a lot of other videos that I do have to work on. And as I said before, I do have a list of requests that I need to do already. So as long as you're willing to wait um, maybe a week or so, and I know that's kind of long, um, but as long as you're willing to wait, let me know. And I'll definitely try to go ahead and make that video as quick as I can. But like I said, that's going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching, and until next time, take care.